This is Amy Chan from CakeDecoratingSchool.com, and if you like cake decorating, you're in the right place. Welcome to our flower series. In this video, we're going to be making buttercream Gerber daisies. These are nice, big, full flowers that are great for quickly covering a cake. We're going to cover the whole process step by step, so you can skip ahead, rewatch, or rewind as desired. We're gonna be making four colors for our Gerber daisies, and we're using American style buttercream, and we're gonna use the following liquid gel food colors. Some lemon yellow, sunset orange, neon bright pink, and then a little bit of coal black, and some buckeye brown. And we're going to do kind of a peachy pink on the petals with a little bit of a darker pink in the middle. And then we're going to use some brown and yellow for the centers to give them kind of a nice realistic feel. And we're going to start with the lighter color pink. So I just have two little dots out here, some of that neon bright pink and a little bit of that sunset orange. And I'm just going to go for like a nice kind of pastel shade of pink. And I'm just going to give it a little bit of a hit of that orange just to give it a tiny bit of a peach kind of vibe. And Gerber daisies come in all sorts of colors. There's lovely kind of pastel, medium tones to really bright, almost electric colors. So you can have a lot of fun with these. So I like where that color is going. I'm just gonna add a little more just to bump it up. Cause I kinda want it to be on the verge of being a medium tone shade. Just kind of almost there, but not quite. And I like where this is going. Just gonna add a little more pink to it. And I think that's gonna be beautiful. So we'll pull over a second bowl and we're gonna make a second shade of pink that's almost a darker version of this one. So we're gonna make our second shade of pink and we're going for more of a medium value. So I'm gonna use drops. And I'm just gonna start with two drops of pink. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of orange I have out on my lid and I'm just going to do some bigger specks of that. So I want to control the amount of orange in comparison to the pink because I still want it to read a nice peachy pink without being too kind of like a salmon. And that neon bright pink color will go pretty far to giving you a nice medium value. I think that's going to be lovely and it looks good with our other color. I'm just going to add a little more orange and one more drop of pink. I want it to really pop against the other color and look like those center petals are kind of not fully unfurled so they have that kind of darker shade to them. I think that is going to be just lovely. So we have a nice kind of medium tone pink. It's got just a little bit of that orange in it. So it's got a nice warm feel to it. And it's gonna look lovely against that first color that we made. So next we're gonna make some yellow and this is gonna help uh, our centers pop out a little bit and add just a little extra detail. I'm just gonna go with one drop or two because it misbehaved of that lemon yellow. And that should give us a nice bright lemony yellow color that'll help to stand out against that pink and provide some nice contrast against the brown that we're gonna make in just a second. And that really did the trick. You can see we got a nice bright yellow. It's nice and sunny, it's a wonderful shade and it's gonna look well with those lovely peachy pink colors that we made. 
So for our final color, we're going to make some brown and we want it to be a bit of a mahogany shade. So I'm going to start with just two drops of my Buckeye Brown or three it's being fun today and then one of my black so more brown than black but that little bit of black in there is really going to help deepen the color and give it a nice kind of dark natural feel especially for flower centers it gives me a color i always think of like stained walnut wood or mahogany where you have those really dark, deep shades of brown that have just a little bit of that black in them. So you can see you have a nice, deep, rich, chocolatey color brown there. And that's gonna be perfect for those flower centers and really help those brighter, lighter colors pop. So let's talk about the bags and tips that we're gonna to use to make our Gerber Daisy. We have four 12 inch disposable decking, decorating bags. You can use whatever type of bags you like, and we have them all fitted directly with tips. We're not going to be changing tips between bags, so we don't need couplers. We have our yellow in a bag with a number one tip. So it's just a plain round tip. If you don't have a number one, you can use a number two. And then we have our brown that we made in a bag with a number three tip. So something larger than what you're using for the yellow. And I like to go up at least two sizes. So there's a difference between the size of dots that we're using. So I'm using a one and three, but you could use say a two and four if you don't have those. And then we have our next two bags with petal tips. So our darker shade of pink, that nice kind of medium tone is fitted with a 101. And we're gonna use this for smaller petals. And then our lighter shade is going to be for our larger petals and we have that fitted with a 104. It's a little easier to see that direction. So it's a larger petal tip and these are both just straight kind of classic petal tips. And those are the four bags that we're going to use for our project. So we're going to be making our Gerber daisies using three simple techniques. The first is long petals. We're going to do our 104 with this. We're going to pull out and back and kind of quick action to make kind of long, narrow petals with these. And then our 101 petals, we're going to use closer to the center and we're going to do shorter J-shaped petals. And finally, we're going to finish it up with some dots with our number three and one. So with our 104, it's gonna be a matter of pulling it out and then back in kind of quick action. So we've got the back of the bag facing kind of away. We're pulling out the length of the nail, rotating and pulling back. And you can see this gives us a petal that's almost kind of rocked up on its edge. That's gonna have some height to it and a slight little kind of cupped feel. And it's gonna give us those feel of those nice, long, narrow petals. The J-shaped ones, you're going to start at the outside edge of the petal, so away from the center. You're going to give it just a little bit of a squeeze and then pull towards itself. And you can see that's going to give it a fat edge on the outside and a skinnier, um, narrow width towards the center. So we're basically just going to let it sorry, we're basically just going to squeeze, let the petal reach the width that we want it to have, and then pull towards ourselves quickly. And that'll make a nice kind of triangular shaped petal with a fat edge on the outside. And finally, we're going to finish up with some dots. And I'm going to demo it with the number three, but we'll do the same thing with the number one. And for dots, you always want to be straight up and down, just up off the surface. You want to let the frosting flow out of the bag. If you're touching the surface or right next to it, it's going to really impede the flow of frosting. So just make sure you touch, raise it up a little bit, give it a squeeze, let it reach its full width, and then just circle it off to make a nice, lovely dot. So let's talk about how we construct our flowers with those techniques. We're going to have our longer petals <clears throat> that we're going to make with our 104 tip. And we're going to pull those flat against the surface. You want to leave a little area in the center, a bit of a void. That's where we're going to put the center of our flower and our smaller petals. And we want to do a ring all the way around the outside. We're going to do a slightly shorter second row. So nest in between one of the petals in the first row and just go in and do it just a little bit shorter. And then we'll do a third one on top of that that we let overhang. And these we're gonna space out a little bit. And this is gonna give us that look like a Gerber daisy where the petals kind of cup 
curve over and have that action, but also where you have petals of multiple lengths. Because you notice they're almost a little bit shaggy in that way, in that they have kind of layers of petals. They're not always all the same length. Some of them hang over, and it gives it that kind of rounded feel to the petals, a nice soft arc. Once we've done our layers with our 104, we're gonna to switch to the bag with the darker color and the 101 tip. And we're just gonna do those short J-shaped petals. The first one, you know, take it maybe like a third of the way out on the, um, the ring there and pull towards. And we're gonna kind of mimic the angle and the slope of that um, kind of last row of petals with our long one. And then we're gonna go ahead and do an even shorter one down in there. And that's gonna give us kind of two rows of tightly nested, shorter petals that have a little bit of a different feel and a darker color. So it's starting to build up that kind of intense ring of color that you get on Gerber daisies. Then we're gonna go in with our brown and we're gonna make larger dots with our number three tip. So I like to go in concentric circles, kind of work all the way around the edge towards the center. And then you can kind of pile it up in the center to give it just a little bit of a domed feel. So I usually go around, do one whole layer, and then maybe go in the center and give it some extra dots just to give it a little bit of height. Then I'm gonna go in with my number one tip and do just a nice tiny ring of dots right there on the edge so where the brown meets that darker pink right where our number three tip and our number 101 are coming together just a nice little row of yellow and that's just going to give us a little spark of a brighter color it's going to provide some contrast between those two shades and give us a more realistic feel because it also then has those tiny little dots of that yellow which i guess is pollen or something else who knows i'd have to look that up but it's going to give the gerber daisies a more realistic feel and they come in a bunch of different colors, so we're doing them in kind of this peachy pink shade, but there's a lot of different colors and they range from pastels to intense, so you can really mix it up and create a fun variety and neat effects with these. So that's how we're gonna build our blossom. Now that we've talked about it on paper, let's bring out our flower nail and give it a try. So let's start making our Gerber daisies. And I have a little piece of parchment here on my paper, and you can see my little squish of buttercream that's underneath kind of makes a great little area to leave open for my centers. So I'm gonna try and leave most of that open and use that as a little bit of a guide. So kind of a quick guide. So I'm gonna start out here and I'm gonna pull out and I'm actually gonna go a little past the edge of my nail just to give myself some longer petals. And these are ones that you can actually make really, really big. So if you wanna make a few flowers to cover a cake, Gerber daisies are a nice one to do. So I'm gonna start just like I did on my paper where I'm pulling out and towards. So each one out and towards the center. And I'm just gonna go slowly and make my way all the way around. And you can see that little bit of buttercream that's smashed in the center makes a really, really nice guide for the void that I'm leaving. For the center of my flowers. So you can see I've got these great big petals. They have a nice shape and feel to them. I'm gonna go back and do a second row. I'm gonna start in between two and I'm just gonna pull it out a little less, right? So just build up. Kind of like, I wanna say like two thirds of the way. And go nice and quick and because that second row is shorter it starts to kind of build up a little bit of an angle to the flowers and I'm gonna do a third row and I'm not gonna do as many petals on this third row I'm gonna just go kind of in between kind of every couple and I'm just gonna go really nice and long again and go over top of some of them and it doesn't have to be exact just every once in a while 
put a third longer one in there. And that just gives us a little bit of a feel of them kind of dropping over top. hanging over and hanging out. And the bigger you do these flowers, the better they look. <clears throat> I almost need a bigger flower nail, or you can even do these actually on your turntable on like a plate or something of that nature. So now we're gonna switch to our 101 bag. And we're just gonna go kind of about a third of the way out and pull in. You can see my area in the center is kind of disappearing a little bit. That's okay, we'll redefine it with our brown. We just wanna make some nice longer petals and then do another second row of shorter ones. So I'm gonna just go a little bit closer to the center, in between two of them, and pull down. And you can see we have those two colors. They're far enough apart that they look distinct, but they're also different enough that they really read against each other. I'm going to switch to my brown now, and if you need to, just give yourself a little dot down there in the bottom, and then work kind of around that just to build up that center again. Give it a little more shape. Make some nice little dots in there just kind of build it up a little bit so it has a little bit of a domed feel. So typically do a layer of dots and then go on top of it. And you can see that gives it a little bit of a crest or an arc there in the middle. And then to help give it just a little more contrast, I'm gonna go in with my yellow and just do a nice little ring of dots all the way around the edge. And then if it needs it, a second one. So just really nice, tiny, little dots. And you can see that gives us a beautiful Gerber daisy. And just that little ring of yellow really helps the center stand out. And you can see they've got height, dimension, they've got kind of a crazy look and feel from the side. And it helps them feel really beautiful and natural. So now that we've practiced on our flower nail, let's go ahead and practice on a cupcake as well. We're just gonna visualize a nice little area there in the center that we're not gonna fill up with our first row of petals. And we just wanna take it, and I've got the back of the bag kind of pointed away from me, and I'm gonna go out and then back. So I'm even going over the edge of the cupcake a little bit. These are a great way to fill up the whole top of a cupcake and get lots of great practice piping. I'm just gonna go create a lovely first ring of petals with my light color. And then I'll go back and do my second and third rows with this color as well. Let's get the frosting down in my bag a little bit. Keep going. So second row in between two of the first ones and just a little bit shorter. And then for my third row, I'm just gonna go out over top of some of them. Not as many as the first two, right? I'm not gonna 
pack them in tightly. Just every couple, just go over. So kind of in between every third or fourth petal. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just give the look like some of these petals are long and kind of overlapping the edge. And you can do some of them closer together and some of them further apart to give it even more natural variation. And once you've got that row on there and you're happy with it, it's time to start working with our 101 tip. We're going to go about a third of the way out on the distance of these petals and do our nice little J-shaped ones. So we're just going to go along the angle we've created with our first three rows. And put in these nice kind of wedge shaped petals. I'm not going to worry if my center is disappearing. If you need to, though, you can remove a little bit of the buttercream if it starts to get a little bit full down in there. Once you've got a first row on with those, just go in, in between two of them and just do a second row. They don't all have to be the same length. You can just let them vary a little bit naturally. It'll actually give you a nice little kind of natural feel. So I'm going to go in with my brown. Give myself a little dot in the center. That makes it nice and easy to work around and just do a nice little series of dots all the way around it. And then I'm going to fill back in in the center just to give it a nice little rounded feel to that. And then on the outside edge of my brown, I'm just going to go in with my yellow just for a little contrast. Nice small dots. Take your time with these. If you hurry, they'll end up big and kind of messy. And this is a great way to kind of ensure that your center is nice and round and get a nice little fine layer of detail. So you get big, full Gerber daisy flowers. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like more about the cake decorating materials and equipment we use, or just some inspirational videos about cake decorating itself, you can follow us on Insta or YouTube at Cake Decorating School. If you'd like to know more about yearly membership and what it entails, you can go to www.cakedecoratingschool.com for more information. And if you're interested in these products, you can check the links in the description.